we'll continue with our series of uh, figures in landscapes and we're going to go back to doing uh, a couple of Rosie with the Poppies and then uh, move on to her sister Liz which you've got some rather nice shots of her in the evening light in the flower beds. Let's go to, so let's go on to this larger work for the moment which we're going to do in acrylics. Yeah, quite simply we've got a very basic set of acrylics over here, I don't need too much special for this. Just a few colours, mixing palettes and brushes and some water. start with the sky, work our way down here to the horizon, it's always fun to do that. And for that I'll use my largest of my brushes here. I'm going to start with a body colour of white, but it will give me more opaque quality. And into that I'm going to put a little bit of pink. Give me a lovely colour for the background. I'm going to start that over here. It always seems very dark when we first start something off like this because uh, because we're using a white canvas. That's why, and you know, the white makes the colour seem very about dumb. It seems very dark compared to the white. But uh, once all the colours are on, it then gives us a full range of tones to work to our darkest and lightest in between. And acrylics, of course, dry very quickly, so I can put glazes and washes over this and change things and do broken colour and all sorts of fun things and I really do love to enjoy colour so we're going to leave those colours in here just brush it well into the surface so I'm not just going to mix colours and put them straight on I'm going to blend them and I'm also going to work them across one another I want to go to a much more cerulean blue now and I should want to work a little bit of very light turquoise green over this as well later. Let's just feel that colour blending in, feathering it in with those strokes. That blue gets stronger as we come up. Leaving white areas that I'm going to bring the cloud over in a minute. a bit more turquoise so I'm going to add a little bit of lemon yellow to that. More greeny colour. Little strokes, broken colour of the yellow blue, slightly green tint into the sky to make it glow more. It's a mixture of that white and light purple pink that we did earlier first of all and just cover up my white areas of the canvas while the paint is still wet enough to blend. Let's use a door on my brush. I'll bring some more blue back into that in a moment to get this feeling of a warm, hazy day. Quite light tones. A little bit of yellow ochre into the clouds. Just a little bit more warmth. Touch more warmth. So very subtly just dropping in these lighter colours into the sky. A little bit pinker, we'll just add a little bit of pink to that. Those clouds, a bit, bit more warmth. I want to come back with a bit more blue. Just feel 
and some of this reflected light coming underneath the clouds here. So nothing is as simple as it might seem at first. Just a little bit of colour here. Now, let's have a little bit more blue back in. Just a bit more blue coming back into this sky places. And that yellow as well, coming down. Perhaps this a bit more. We've almost got our sky there, a fraction darker. There we are. That should give us a nice effect for the sky. Now we come down to the horizon, which is a bluey green. So we're going to make our green, this time directly with the deeper blue and yellow. Slightly hazy in the background. Light colour on first. Right underneath the head there. Oh, I need some darker colour. I need to go down to scale. Size and brush. I'm going to take a little bit of Prussian blue now and my yellow ochre. Make it much warmer. See so of colours into that. Quick as that. Just indicate, just giving an impression of, of these things. And that gives us our cooler greens, greeny blues into the background. A feeling of distant tree. Right, next we come on to the next field down. We need a nice yellowy green. For those backgrounds. Quite a light yellow green actually that one. A little bit more white into there just to lighten up a bit. And again, fairly thinly because I'm going to put other colours over the top of it. And that's got to come all the way down to there. The colour will become slightly warmer afterwards. Just leave a little bit of where those dark, darker bits of grass are coming to sewing over for the future. Now I need to let that dry off a bit so that I can get uh, the other colours on top of it without them blending. Give us a feeling of perspective going on. And maybe a little bit of these yellows just coming into the trees in the background just to catch a little bit of sunlight here and there. Right, now this colour of the green here is fairly warm and I want to use a big brush to paint in most of that just to give myself a, a good base to work on to later. So I'm going to use yellow ochre and some cobalt blue. And now I want to get rid of all of this white canvas because there's far too much here. Can't see wood for trees. I'm going to use some yellow ochre and cobalt blue to give me a ground to this area because it's just pretty warm. Using fairly simple effects and brush strokes to uh, give a feeling of texture on these greens. I want to work very rapidly because this is how I like to work when I'm outdoors, so I like to do the same, have the same sort of pleasure and spontaneity when I'm working on a canvas in the studio as well. There we go, that's got rid of most of the white. Now we can start to work in some textures into this to give the feeling of the uh, grasses and Poppy stems, the bluer colours, little short strokes in the background amongst this lot. To give the feeling of lots and lots of little bits of grasses, and the spiky, fluffy ends to them. We can make something look quite complicated with fairly simple brush strokes. Just by painting the wet into the wet and getting these textures moving around. And later we'll come over with even more detail but just for the moment we'll give the effect of the detail. 
little flicks of the brush, the tip of the brush only, just the leading edge. We don't have to keep changing brushes to smaller brushes. Cool against warm, light against dark, rough against smooth will help to give us an illusion of depth and space and texture. There we go, I'm going to go a bit darker still. I'm going to add a tiny bit of black into it now, a little bit of purple. Start to get some of these slightly deeper tones, which will make that colour I've just done seem cooler, bluer. It's important that uh, Again, we show cool against warm, as well as the rough against the smooth and the light against the dark. We want something to look bluer. We don't always paint more blue into it. Because we have to make it look bluer by putting a warm next to it. And the same with the way around. If you want something warm, then put something cool next to it. We'll be coming up with lighter colours afterwards later with this. Here we get that dry off a bit. That's our base. Now let's look at the figure. Find a small brush again. I do like these filberts because they're rounded at the end and it gives me a lot more, I feel, um, control with uh, shapes. So the hat. What do we want to do with the hat? Um, not a very light cream, I think, at first. So white and a little touch of lemon yellow into that. Very, very light. I think we'll be more pink after that, but we'll just start with that. There we go. Let the sunlight come across the hat like that. I'm going to put a bit more pink in the foreground shortly on that hat. Just for the moment, let's just put that in. A very light cream. Get that established. Get the shape right. And then we'll come back with the pink. Do that in a moment. A bit of light going back there. Right. And while I'm at it. Around the hat, the drawing of it. There's a, a warmer band of slightly more purpley blue happening into here. There's a tad more blue in there. I'm just going to try the texture to that same colour is happening down here inside. But it's a bit warmer there in a moment. On the band of the hat here, it's a lot more yellow ochre. A little touch of warmth, I think, under her hair here. Right up to the hat there. Make it a bit lighter in a moment. Darken down in a moment on that. It wants to be. Quite a light orange just there. This lovely warms. It's a little bit warmer just on this edge. A bit more sunshine going on than I've got. Now I need to come down to her face because well, we've got that orange on the brush. There's that happening in the face here. Take a bit of work. And then a lot of this is suddenly cooler. Very similar colour to we had in the sky earlier.
that light reflecting down the side of the face here, down the nose, to the mouth, round cheeks, and into the lower mouth and chin just a bit. Very light pink area of light shining under her hair here. Down. Reflecting over her shoulder there. Even to the point of being maybe a little bit cream. And that light colour goes to a very light blue in places too, so we'll take it back and add a little bit of blue to it just to come around the top here and get start to get the pattern of the light colours of the dress just mm. indicating these patterns at the moment and I'll pick them up in more detail towards the end under a hand here a little bit you can see the way we can gradually build up these colours and some of that little bits of dark may just just be texturing a bit into the hat. Now, while I've got the dark of my brush, let's just look at her hair under here. And establish some of those darks. See how quickly we can establish something that looks a bit like a face. Let's do the same with her eyes. Just indicating. those greens come to the shadows as well of her face. So quickly we can build a figure. We'll cut into that back back into that in a moment. Let's just get the approximate form. And much much lighter. Look at the feeling of that hand coming round just Couple of brush strokes, keep it simple. Fingers here. Now let's come down to the dress. Take that to uh, lack a little bit of Prussian. Way down there. It's slightly lighter at the top edge than down the bottom edge. There we go. Established that so the darks are there. Just the underpainting. Find these colours up gradually, build them up. Okay, time to get rid of the rest of the whites and establish some of the poppies at colours. Let's get these reds on and just get rid of very, very loosely. And then we'll gradually work up into it with this painting. You can see how quickly we can establish the underpainting, gradually finding colours we want and how. Careful, I'm twisting my brush as I go along because I don't want 
all of this to be the same poppy shape. There are masses of them here, so let's really enjoy plonking them on. Let's almost get rid of all the white so I can start to see where my colours need to really go. Bits of browns and reds going on. And this acrylic is sinking into this darker ground, so I've got to come back in and put second coats over, and I'll make some even lighter coats as well as it goes on. There's some gorgeous colours going on amongst it, so let's uh, now start to look at some of those and really enjoy playing with these beautiful cool and warm reds. This is the magenta I'm using now, which is a cooler red. Nice big blocks of colour, single brush strokes. Find it. Look at the colours compared one to another and get them right, put them in the right shapes in the right places and your painting just appears. don't have to worry about it. It will just happen like a jigsaw. with some oranges later with this as well. Then we'll let that dry for a while because I'm going to come back on with cleaner colours. So I'm going to go away for a while and come back to this painting. Well, now it's time to go back and we'll look a bit more at the figure and portrait. And I'm going to use my smaller brush. I'm going to need that for the finer details here and for some of these bits of grasses and so on as we go on. And with that comes a little bit of cold at the back of the head. It's a matter amazing how these little things can make such a difference. But this reflected light can just liven everything up a bit. To work around her face a bit more. Look at these lights reflections coming down. And into the side of her face. A little bit there. And the mouth needs to be a little bit warmer. And we'll just take a touch of the purple and the blue just to warm her mouth a little. Look at these colours that are going on in and around the face and the shading here. Subtly around the neck as well. And the fact that there are cools going on in there. And if we want those cools to really work, We've got to play even more of the blues or the cools nearby to make them appear cooler. So I put some blue in here now. It will help to make the other cools cooler. It's all a play of one colour against another, isn't it? We need some more warms in there too, I think. So I'll take just a little brown now and start to put a little bit of brown showing in the hair. Which again will bring the warmth out a bit. And against those we'll play the cools too. So we'll go back in with our very deep blues and look at where the cools might be going on. There are some glorious colours reflecting all around in the dress and everywhere. And they're coming down right into the various colours of the dress. Now we just have to put a few highlights in and hopefully we can start to make this start to look like a figure in sunlight. The thing is, we put that colour in, we then find that it might affect the others and we've got to then use it down in other places too. You don't want to fiddle too much, that's a trouble. You can easily get too involved with something, trying to fiddle with things and then it smells peculiar. Now, a lot of these things work by not just um, what's here, but what's going on behind as well. So if I now make a much lighter green, you'll see what I mean. Earth I'm talking about. Take some white and some yellow. A bit of the light blue, 
just start to try and find some of these lighter greens that are going on behind. You'll see how it brings her out. I'm going to bring a lot more yellow into this in a minute as well. I only just want to work up some of these lighter greens to give the sunlight. And I'm going to make lots and lots and lots of little strokes of this light green going across. Some more darks in to make the uh, dark areas that are dark at the moment actually look slightly lighter because they are lighter than the darks I'm now putting in. The figure's almost complete. Now I'll we'll take the same darks and place those around the basket here to give more form to the basket as well. I get a feeling of texture in the basket. Now, when I put some lighter colours in that basket in a moment and some other flowers, the basket will make more sense as well. So I'm going to take my smaller pointy brush and uh, just go back into there with some very deep greens and darks because we have colours here happening as well to get this feeling of these plenty of water and it so I can get some fluidity on the brush and let's see if we can now get the feeling of this corn that's growing up here just like that. I've already got the basics of it because I painted it in earlier if you remember and uh, some of those stems are coming down into here as well. A bit more corn just there first. As if we're actually like a field mouse, we're actually here and involved with it. I'll turn in amongst this lot. Which is a part of the picture, not separate to it. It's a part of the whole scene. And you see we suddenly start to get the effect of a very tangled field full of poppies, don't we? Now Having done that, equally we need to come back with some of the lighter colours. We have some real yellow. I'm going to have to make it a, a clean area of the palette. Put a little touch of the orange into it. A little touch of the white to try and give me the brightness of yellow orange I need. And let's see if we can find some of these lovely yellow flowers that are just growing in and amongst. That's why they're reflecting underneath her hand there. If we put some into the basket. Going on behind here as well. And a few just happening around her. Some raw uh, yellow ochre now, just to make those yellows seem a little more yellower because the yellow ochre is more golden and therefore it will make the yellow seem a bit more yellow. The background I've missed out at the moment is a very very pale blue. I'm going to take another brush, another oval and mix a little white with my cerulean. Well, let's just come back up into there with that. So if we can just find a bit of those blues that are happening back in there. While well, we're on those blues we'll find a lot of them actually happening back in here as well, reflecting off the leaves, which is going to help those warms of the poppies. But the lovely light we start to get now is we feel this daylight reflecting across shapes and forms and surfaces. Warmer on those fingers. Bit of the arm here. Makes a difference. I've got to start feeling some of the cools that are going on in amongst the uh, grasses here a bit more. A little bit more of the blue happening in places and that will make the poppies stand out more as well. Oh, as you see we're gradually bringing up the colours of the poppies now. I don't want a bit more orange into those poppies, so I'm going to take some yellow and red and a little bit of white just to try and get that vibrance again. I think. Yeah, 
If I take this into oils it would take it a whole stage further and I just have to decide whether I actually want that or not. Because it's quite effective as it is and it's fairly low key. I think all I need if I'm going to keep it as acrylics is a few more of these darks and I could almost leave it at that and I've got other things I want to get on to so why not indeed just try and get a little more of these light, light pinks on here it's very difficult to quite get this colour I think uh, maybe a bit of yellow into that Let's see what that does and see if that gives me the colour I want. Got to get exactly the right colours, and if you get the right colours and put them in the right shapes in the right places, then suddenly things come to life as hopefully this is doing right now. So this is rose, a little bit of cadmium red, a little bit of lemon yellow, and uh, I'm just picking out the sunlight reflecting across petals. We're trying to see if we can lighten up some of these oranges just a bit. Just finally all these little bits of spots of light. Just to lighten things up just a little bit. Okay, I think we'll call that painting finished unless I go on further with oils.